Hi, my name is Thomas Odring. Along with Peter Reinaldson, I want to talk to you today uh, about record keeping within a free and open source uh, context. Why should you care about record keeping? Um, record keeping is a process that we undertake daily, but a lot of us never really think about it. Historically, we can see traces of previous societies carved in stone or pictures and letters of people of historical prominence. Record keeping happens, but sometimes it's incidental, while other times it may be in pursuance of legal obligations. But if I ask the question, what records do you have? You would likely ask me, well, what do you mean by a record? You have to give me a definition. So if I told you you were being audited by tax authorities, I think the concept of records would become clear very quickly. We'd be talking about assets, liabilities, income and expenditure. But where are they? Technology evolution has taken invoices from, from paper to email attachments to automatic requests available in, in online banking. More and more, we allow third parties to store our records. Just yesterday, I was reading about Adobe's latest update for Lightroom iOS, where they which has seen the accidental permanent deletion of data. We simply can't rely on third parties to store our data. There are also implications on right to privacy depending on the jurisdiction that you are in. So if I could convince you to take a closer look at record keeping, how would you go about it? Well, Norway has a record keeping uh, standard called NORWORK that roughly translates to Norwegian archival standard and has a nice balance between record keeping and preservation considerations. It's evolved over time from the 1980s to, to follow changing practices in information technology, record keeping and the way we work. If we consider the picture on the right, this is the classical record keeping structure that helps define various contexts for our records. Perhaps the easiest way to understand this is to get you to think about the file system on your Linux box. At the root, you have slash boot, slash home, slash bin, slash var, etc. And at some level, you can understand all the files in the file system. But at another level, you want to see the files in their correct context. For example, all files related to booting and slash boot. Record keeping is similar. We need to understand that all the records are in place, but we also need to see them in smaller context from a usability perspective. The various colors used here say something about the role metadata plays in creating contextual information for records. At the top, we typically have an organizational context. Below that, we have classification and class. And these are like a, a tagging context where tags can be a functional activity or, or an, an object like a, a person, a car, a building. Below that, we have a file context. And this groups related information together that typically defines a kind of transactional context. The file that you see there on, on the right hand side is analogous to the paper based file we are used to seeing as, as something that stores a set of documents together. The record here is analogous to, to an envelope containing documents. Um, the document context then is required as we need to be able to handle the fact that not all document formats are suitable for long term preservation. So, for example, Microsoft Word and LibreOffice Writer documents, they have to be converted to PDFA in advance. So this NOMARC standard is something that's been around for close to, to 40 years. And I think you can, you can look at it and say that the purpose is to ensure that records have, have value as evidence and can be extracted and preserved in, in a cost effective manner. NOMARC serves mainly as a guideline for practical principles that should be followed when implementing a, a record keeping system. So we've implemented a free and open source implementation of, of NOWORK. <clears throat> there are a number of proprietary systems uh, in existence at the moment. Nikita is a technical implementation of NOWORK, and in many ways it's an opinionated software approach to record keeping. The source code is available on GitLab under an AGPL license. The mailing list is here if you want to get in contact us, but it's much easier to find us on IRC, hashtag Nikita, on, on Freenode. Just to give an idea of our technology stack, Nikita is a Spring Boot application that closely follows the Spring release lifecycle. We use Java 11, but to be honest, we have very little code that isn't Java 7 in there. Our ORM layer is based on Hibernate, and the database is whatever Spring supports, but we provide property files for MySQL and Postgres. And if you start Nikita in demo mode, it, it kickstarts the in-memory database H2 for you. The API is developed in accordance with Hatios Maturity Level 3. Um, the official API we implement is developed by the National Archives of Norway and maintained on GitHub in an open and transparent manner.
Nikita is an opinionated approach to record keeping, but it's not just our opinion. It's a community approach to defining that opinion. We have a prototype uh, user interface in place that's been developed using Angular 1.7 and uh, Bootstrap 4. Uh, the GUI exclusively makes use of the API, so it could give you an idea of how to build an application on top of it, on top of the API. But we mainly use the GUI for teaching purposes at Oslo Metropolitan University. Nikita has a sister project, uh, NORC 5 Tester, that is written in Python that makes use of the standardized API. And this can be used to, to verify, verify compliance with the standard, export data, import data. We've used it already to, to make email and picture collections searchable. Now, I want to dive into the API and just give you a quick idea of how it works. I've already mentioned it's the Hattio's Maturity Level 3, use of HTTP requests, along with extensive links to expose functionality. So if you know Hattio's, you know what we're talking about. It's, it's discoverability and traversability. Uh, authentication is uh, based on OAuth 2. It's easy to get form-based, basic, and JWT working if you want. We, we have uh, instances of examples of that in the code. We are working on supporting OpenID Connect uh, for logging on. A uh, single sign-on should be possible, but we, we haven't done it ourselves yet. We, we have our own authorization server implemented. Search is based on the OData standard. It's experimental, but we're seeing pretty good results with that at the moment. And uh, updates, so to uh, support concurrency, concurrency control from the client perspective, we support e-tags. We also have uh, entities that support user-defined additional metadata. Uh, this is something we call business-specific metadata. <clears throat> so if we hit the root of the application with a GET request, this is what you will get back. You basically get back a link to an OpenID Connect information that will give you an idea on, on, on how to log on. So if we hit that OpenID, end, OpenID Connect endpoint, we see endpoints for authorization. Uh, this is the endpoint you're going to use to log on. Registration, if you want to create an account for the system. Token introspection. And token revocation, so if you want to, to log off. So when you want to log on, you have to do that with a post request. The authorization endpoint is, in, is actually protected with basic authentication. It, it comes this way out of the box in Spring. So you need to have a password to get access to it. Um, and then you just provide the username and password you're actually trying to log on as. You get back an, an access token uh, along with uh, information about its validity in, in seconds. So again, hitting the API uh, route as a logged in user, you're going to see a number of new endpoints uh, providing additional functionality being exposed. So I think in, in particular, what's, what's make, worth making note of here is the, is the metadata endpoint. So all status values, uh, for example, is a file open or closed and, and so on. All status values are defined here. We can find information about the status values as well. We have an administrative endpoint for undertaking administrative tasks. And we have a logging and tracing endpoint. And this gives access to change log for objects as, as well as an event log. Uh, NORC in particular has defined an approach to case handling and the functionality for the case handling then is defined here. And the record keeping structure that we, we spoke about earlier, its endpoint is here. So we're, we're talking about this guy that I described earlier on. You will get access to functionality relating to that endpoint from here. So if I hit the record keeping route, as opposed to the application route, uh, we see endpoints for the various contexts in the record keeping structure, this guy here. Um, but in addition to that, we also see uh, endpoints that can allow us to create a, a, a fonds. We can create a, a fonds owner, define them, and get a list of who owns all these records, and so on. Um, from this point in the results set list in the JSON payload, we can actually see from, from series all the way down to document object, which is all the way uh, down here. So <clears throat> if, for example, I wanted then to get a list of all the file objects that I, I want, I can either traverse down from the, the root of the application, or I can request a list of all files I have access to from the list of endpoints defined in the record keeping route. 
Here I'm using the endpoint defined in the record keeping uh, route, this guy here. So it's just a get request. And you see, we currently have access to only four file objects in the system. Well, that's just because we haven't filled up the system with that much data. However, we can very quickly have many thousands of objects here. So we need to be able to filter out and re retrieve particular objects of, of interest. So uh, Nikita has implemented a standard called uh, OData. And OData brings SQL-like capabilities to the API level. So the OData dollar filter uh, command is like the where clause in, in uh, SQL. Uh, there is a command dollar top and dollar skip, and they're like limit in MySQL, and there's also a dollar order by. So when it comes to filter, there's a, there's a lot of different things that you can do with, with filtering. You can, uh, you can do contains, uh, you can do starts with, you can do ends with, equals, greater than, less than, and, and so on. So in this case, I'm looking at the fil filter out objects that uh, where the, 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 the file has a title that contains the word Nikita. But I only want to filter out the top two results. The first two results and I want the results ordered by title in descending order. So uh, in this case uh, there is actually only one uh, object that will match that query so we only get one back but if there was floor or more we would actually get uh, we would only get two back the first two. OData is a very useful and flexible approach to searching um, for data from web-based APIs. So I want to give you an idea on how to update objects using e-tags. If, if two clients, Alice and Bob, both retrieve a copy of the same object, and Alice updates the object on the server, and subsequently then Bob tries to update the same object, Bob must be informed that the object has already changed and must decide how to react. So Bob's attempt to update will be rejected until he proves he is working on the latest copy of the data. The curl command here now uses minus V, just to show us uh, some of the headers on the HTTP request. We retrieve a file object identified uh, by a system ID and make a note of the e-tag value from the HTTP header as we are going to use this when we want to update the object. So when we do an update, we do a put request and provide the e-tag value and the data that we wish to update. So we're going to have to give this e-tag in, in the header and we're going to have to give it this data. On inspection of the return payload, the, this is the JSON payload that comes back, and here are the HTTP headers. We can see that the, the value actually has been updated, and you can also see that the updated timestamp is uh, correct in accordance with um, when it was uh, changed. And we see that the E tag value has changed as well. If I want to create an object, uh, it's going to be a, a post request. Um, but when you're creating an object, we need to know where in the record keeping structure or the tree to place the object. In much the same way as with a file system, you need to know the parent directory before placing a file on the file system. In NoArc, you have to know which object is the parent. Otherwise, we end up with a lot of loose leaves not connected to the tree or records that are missing their correct contextual information. So here we identify the correct series. So this archive del, this is a series, and this is the system ID of the archive del. It's a, it's a UUID. And there's an endpoint here uh, that says new file. So this will allow us to create this file and put it into the correct place in the tree. And this is the approach for creating any kind of object. Uh, you, you have to know exactly where in the tree we want to um, create it. Put to place the object. So it's a post request with the data and the, the exact place that you want to place it. And then you get back um, the information about that uh, object that you just created. To delete an object is just a simple HTTP delete request. Response is a 204 no content if the delete is successful. But you have, have to have access rights to delete an object. And the object must not have children as referential integrity is in place. <clears throat> and I think a very nice thing about uh, Nikita and about the, the NORC API is that um, it's useful to be able to add additional metadata at runtime without having to redefine and rebuild a data model. In our case, this is known as business-specific metadata and be, can be configured by an administrator. 
it is then immediately available for use by clients. So it's only available on some of the uh, uh, entities, a file record, administrative unit, user correspondence part. We, we believe it should be on, on more, but this is what this, the standard allows at the moment. has to be registered by an admin, admin, administrator. So to create uh, additional uh, or dynamic metadata at runtime, you, you will hit the uh, metadata endpoint, the business specific metadata endpoint, and you provide it the following uh, payload, uh, the name of the, of the attribute you want to add, the data type, whether or not it's, it's in use, has it been outdated or not, uh, the description of the metadata, and if you have a source of information that can provide more information to somebody, you can use that, you can identify it here. So uh, clients can then have access to uh, such metadata. So business specific metadata can be added to objects. So if you have a file, an existing file, you can just add it to it. Um, you can uh, update this if it's necessary. And it'll be a part of the object any time that object is retrieved. Um, the interesting thing here, though, is also that this also will make its way into the preservation format. So, so when you're creating an extraction for preservation purposes, this data will also uh, make its way across. Uh, it should also be possible to import this into a system if you're using an extraction to actually create um, for import purposes. So who can use Nikita? Well, when we're finished, I think anyone. It can be a, a person, a corporation, a government, a non-profit organization. You, you just need a requirement to keep records. And we believe that it, it has a level of maturity that, that makes it worth talking about now. We've been working with this for a number of years. Um, and it's kind of now that we, we believe that, you know, it's worth telling people about this. Take a look at this. It might be useful to you. While Nikita is an opinionated approach to record keeping, one of our goals is that it should be a tool that is extendable to meet your domain requirements. And this is where we see that in particular, free and open source software is going to be very useful to support that status and future work, we need to look back and deal with issues from earlier on. Okay, There's, as, as with any code base, there is going to be some technical debt in there. Uh, we definitely need to, to revisit the, the database model from, from an optimizational point of view. We're using Hibernate for, and you know, it's, it's got its plus and its uh, negative sides. This is documentation. Um, we're, we're moving over to a, a test-driven development approach where documentation is generated based on, on tests, but that's taking time. We're lacking uh, code comments and, and so on. Um, so there is a good bit of work to, to, to make um, the code base more developer friendly. We also want to finalize the code base to be in compliance with the NOWORK 5.5 API. Um, and I think that really the big thing that's left there is pagination, to ensure that pagination is in place. And then there's a, there's a lot of kind of like uh, low hanging fruit that we have to deal with as well. We would like to evolve the NORC standard parallel with Nikita. We're catching up now with the with the API, and now we're able to uh, challenge the developers of the of the API, you know, to consider new things. So we're looking at full text search on uploaded documents, batch processing of database updates. I, I know that any record keeping system um, that's out there, they, typically over time, you have to go into the database and, and make changes. We prefer that changes be made through the API. Um, and we believe that we, we can we can do that using O data. Currently, the API is in Norwegian, underlying code and databases in English. So we actually map from Norwegian to English from from the API point. And one of the things that is we want to be able to support other languages. So if it's French, German, Spanish, but I think we we need a better way to handle that. In particular, we need some kind of uh, profile uh, support. So that was a very quick introduction to our open source record keeping um, software project. Um, there's so much more to it um, than what I've been able to give you in, in 20 minutes. Uh, if this did sound interesting, get in touch with us. We'd, we'd love to hear from you and we'd be happy to tell you uh, a lot more about uh, what Nikita can do. Thanks for watching.